Hey, what's up guys? Steve Camrad here with ADV Pulse and today we are testing the new Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro for 2024. While it's not all new, uh, there's a big chunk of this bike that requires, you know, a review and some, some insight to it. Uh, before we get into that, we should get into the crash. Or should we get into the, uh, the fun? Let's do some fun, then I'll show you guys that I made a little whoopsie, uh, and then we'll get into what's old and new on this bike. Okay, so what's old, what's new? What's the same on the 2024 Triumph Tiger Rally Pro? The wheel set is the same. It's the 2117 tubeless wheel set. Uh, for my 21 personal Triumph Tiger, that wheel set's been bomb proof. I wish it was an 18 inch rear. Triumph didn't update it, even though they have an 18 inch rear on their Tiger 1200. Um, they just didn't do it. So unfortunately we're stuck with the 17, which kind of limits some options for the super aggressive rear tires choices, but not the end of the world for your average adventure rider anyway. The suspension's also stayed the same on this bike. It's show units front and back, 240 mil of travel up front, 230 at the rear, uh, compression rebound and preload adjustments on the front, and the rear has a rebound and preload adjustment. That rebound adjustment does cross talk, so you'll be able to turn up your rear rebound, but it also turns up your rear compression. You know, the suspension actually reacts really well to adjustments, so if you end up with one of these bikes, I highly recommend it. Moving on, the brakes are actually still the same, but they're now a linked braking system. Only in the on-road mode, so don't scoff at it if you're an aggressive off-road rider. But on-road, the linked braking system was fantastic, but it still has the Brembo style Emma front, uh, monoblock calipers up front, all the braking power you could need for this bike. And that linked braking system takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. When you're on-road and you're riding aggressively, you can get that front brake done, and you can feel it doing the rear braking for you, which is a really nice premium feature and then that all get, can get turned off once you go off-road and you go into your off-road pro or, or off-road mode. The frame is the same carryover frame, uh, really good frame, pretty good geometry. The only thing I would have liked to see was that Triumph change that rake angle from 24.2 degrees of rake uh, to something a little bit more raked out closer to the 27 mark for a little bit more front-end stability. We'll get into uh, why that might be important when we kind of talk about that little whoopsie I had getting into the new stuff the biggest change for this bike is going to be the motor this new motor makes 13 percent more power and you still have that 270 degree t-plane crossfire crank which gives you that bottom low end front of like kind of like a, a staggered parallel twin or a v twin bike but then you get that triple world smoothness from the three cylinder it has the counterbalancers in it uh, fantastic motor i can only imagine trying to put a ton of development into that uh, original one and that all comes through here, but it's much more refined. It's made with a bunch of parts for this motor that you can't upgrade. You couldn't just get it done on your 2021 Triumph Tiger. It's not a just a tune. It's not just an exhaust. Um, so let's go into that. So while the motor has a new tune and a new exhaust, uh, that's not what makes it up entirely. Uh, some of the big things that are, are on this bike are going to be the high compression pistons, 13 to 1. It now passes Euro 5 plus emissions tests. It's more efficient and gets better gas mileage while making more power. Uh, it has high lift cams on the intake and exhaust side. New intake trumpets for a little bit more torque down low. And uh, the exhaust ports are now oval shaped as they go into the headers. And along with those high compression pistons, you now get this motor that wants to run a little bit stronger and it, it livens the bike up totally and, and kind of change the way that this bike is gonna be ridden and actually the way it feels. So if you actually go in and look at the dyno chart for this bike, where the outgoing 900 would make a power curve that would hit 7,000 RPM and kind of barely make any more power than that, it would still pull all the way to the 10,000 RPM red line. Uh, this new 24 900 Rally Pro pulls all the way to the red line in a very smooth arc trajectory and continues to build power right up until the red line. Uh, while that makes for a lot of excitement on road and, and you can really feel it, you can really feel the bike kind of like whoosh away from you and you feel kind of like stretching your arms out when you're really riding it hard and you're up in that high RPM range. The, uh, the off-road feel for the bike is a lot more lively, even though the, the trajectory for both the old and the new 900 Rally Pro is like almost overlapped until they hit that 7,000 mark. Um, it's just those high lift cams, high compression pistons. The bike feels like it's kind of ready to go. And then it allows the bike to dance around a little bit. And, uh, and you know, I own a 21 900 Rally Pro. 
and uh, we'll get into kind of the competition and whether you, you would want to upgrade on one, but feels uh, like it's actually just a much better motorcycle. Body work wise, you get a, some updated body work. Uh, the bike looks really good. It comes in this new uh, kind of gray and orange color. Gives it some flair. It's got some really nice glossy kind of finish to it. And it, uh, it actually dresses the bike up quite a bit from that matte gray or uh, khaki green color that uh, from the previous generations, although that is still available. The TFT display is now 7 inches. It's uh, pretty much the same unit that okay. comes on the Tiger 1200, really premium. Lacks some of the kind of information unless you go into the menus and ride around with like your menu kind of half opened. Uh, some guys don't like that. Otherwise, you get a nice big tack, uh, circular clock style, very traditional, which the old Tiger, the 21 900 Rally Pro, did not have. It had these really weird wings that I did not like, still don't like it, but this new dashboard is... Uh, much easier to read and gives you the information you really kind of want. If you're doing some sport touring and you need to watch your uh, odometer or trip or uh, gas mileage, you're going to have to have almost a menu open next to your tachometer, which is going to feel a little awkward at first. Uh, after a while, you get used to it, but the, the new dashboard is really nice, really easy to read, uh, and the user interface from this bike is kind of a mixture of both the Tiger 1200 Rally Pro and then the old outgoing Tiger 900 Rally Pro. There's been a pretty massive upgrade to the electronics package and some of the ways that this bike kind of delivers its uh, power and braking. Uh, everything goes through a, a pretty upgraded and very uh, modern Bosch IMU system, which then allows that bike to dial in, say if uh, you're at a lean angle and you ask for 100% throttle and it knows that there's no way, even in optimum conditions on road, that that's not available. Rather than giving it to you and then asking the traction control to dial it all back in, it softens that hit a little bit. You still will get the traction control light to come on if you're not in perfect uh, traction conditions. And then it will let the traction control step in later to bring that all back together. But you're not having this big shut off of power, which is a really nice feature, especially with this new motor. And what that gives you is the ability to actually kind of step the rear end out on the asphalt. Uh, and we'll get into the kind of feeling of that later, but it, it highlights the electronics package that's still kind of available and was still there on the 2021s but with this new motor and the extra power it really kind of shines through and gives it this like really premium feel without feeling like it's a safety net you know something you don't need uh along with like the length rear brakes a lot of guys are going to say they don't need them well i tried them out and they're fantastic as well as the new quick shifter for this bike it's got a second generation quick shifter so it's slightly updated works flawlessly up and down through all the gears and uh, really helps out if you kind of blow a turn off road. I really like it because you can get all your braking done and focus on that and your balance and, and where you're going and ask for a downshift so you don't stall out. Washout protection in here. Come on, baby. Oh, we'll do a clutchless downshift. And then carry on on your way. Uh, speaking of stalling, these bikes performed really well, but also almost no one had any stalling issues, which was kind of a problem with the old Tiger 800s that uh, you know I spent a lot of time on. And, kind of look at them funny and they would stall out this bike is like really hard to stall the braking system on it is really nice and it slides better i don't know exactly what triumph did there to make it so much better i suspect there's a little electronic trickery going on with the fuel injection and engine mapping as well as possibly a little bit of slipper clutch action going on in there because uh, this bike has a slipper assist clutch so you'll get a bit of a disengagement from the clutch before you get a stall out really really nice and and i actually never stalled the bike out once riding it today and that's usually something i do quite a bit because i can be heavy on the rear brakes i'm not too uh finesse with that so i'll stall the bike out pull the clutch in start again never had to do it once on this trip uh with over 200 uh, miles of off-road and on-road riding slid the bike around was pretty negligent with the clutch especially on some heavy braking downhill off-road stuff and the bike just kept running so along with the motor, the electronics package, the braking package, this bike actually just wants to keep itself running so you can feel the engine management system uh, kind of keeping this bike really where you want it and it just feels way more premium. Uh, I'm gonna use that word quite a bit. Hopefully I won't be too repetitive, but premium is what this bike feels like now. And that in part is a big thing because of the engine. Uh, besides the motor, we did get some rubber mounted bar mounts and uh, the risers for that are 15 millimeters further back than the outgoing model. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It kind of pulls the rider triangle a little bit close to the rider's body, especially if you're riding super aggressively off-road and standing up. Um, you kind of tend to have to pull yourself forward over the bike if you're riding super aggressively. It's probably not going to be the case for most adventure riders where they go out and buy a set of bar risers, 
or bar riser backs. Uh, I'm not the guy to do that. I really don't suggest doing that too often. Um, but these put them in a nice place for a lot more adventure riders. Uh, people are going to say it feels better, more comfortable. The bike doesn't feel as big or intimidating. And then if you want to get the bars away from you, you can roll them up. Uh, we didn't have time, but you can spin those bar mounts uh, 180 degrees, spin them around, and they'll be further away from you. But they'll be further away from you than the outgoing bike. They're also rubber mounted for the people that complained about uh, RPMs or buzzing the handlebars. I did not complain about that on the uh, 2021 Rally Pro. And now it's virtually eliminated and no one ever mentioned any kind of buzz in the handlebars. So that's pretty much all gone. Quick note, Triumph has discontinued the Tiger 900 Rally. So you can only buy the Rally Pro in 2024 and newer, which in my opinion is a good thing. It comes with the heated seats, heated grips, the lower crash bars, the skid plate, which has actually been beefed up a little bit. They took a little bit of abuse today. We rode around with the traction control on for a little bit today. It's pretty intrusive. There is no slide control, which would probably be a really nice uh, asset to have. Now, when you go into your rider mode, you can actually turn the ABS completely off or you can turn it uh, off to the rear where it'll allow a lot of lock and it'll also allow you to get some pretty uh, good speed differential on the front tire. So you're not kind of grabbing at the front brake in an off-road mode and still kind of, you know, like it's just like got a freewheel towards the edge of a cliff. All that Bosch IMU and, and all the kind of programming that's gone into the bike has allowed that to really shine through. It really makes a big difference when you're off-road riding. I've come from some even modern adventure bikes that have too much intervention with the ABS. Uh, this bike does not. And, you know, it's a nice safety feature to have it on that front tire, uh, especially for newer riders coming to a turn too hot. If you grab a fistful of uh, front brake, you're just going to tuck that front. Uh, which brings me to brings me to my crash. Um, look, it happens, guys. Um, one of the things that I would say is I would have done the same exact thing on my personal bike. I would have rode it exactly the same way. Um, I don't necessarily think it was a massive rider error, and I don't think it was the bike's fault either. Uh, it was just kind of a freak accident. I came over some gravel on a pretty kind of sl slight left-hand uphill turn and I uh, kind of just tucked the front. So let's take a look at that. Oh. Oh. What? Yeah. Oh. Yep, that was a pretty big one. I think I was in fourth gear for that. Um, Big thanks to uh, fellow journalist Justin Dawes for not running me over because he was pretty close behind me. We weren't really pushing anything too hard. You know, like I said, I kind of made a mistake and it's just kind of what happens sometimes. And fortunately, I'm okay. Uh, my Alpine Stars gear, which this stuff has uh, some pretty minimal padding in it, but saved my elbow, saved my knees. Uh, my Alpine Stars Tech 7 boots and uh, helmet all came through flawlessly. Really, really kind of <laughs> great to have that stuff on cool thing about it is even though I crashed the bike that hard the whole bike was pretty much straight I just kind of tore off a, a radiator guard there and uh, dented the tank in a little bit you know so along with that crash the only kind of thing that might have made a big difference there would be the rake angle on this frame uh, Triumph has always put a pretty steep rake angle on their bikes uh, usually about 24 degrees which is closer to a street bike than an adventure bike allows for quick turn in uh, a lot of stability on asphalt feels really good um, but off-road, it, it, it can tend to cause the front end to push a little bit. And I went back and I looked at the footage of the crash. Um, and, you know, it seems like the front end pushed a little bit. I actually really didn't feel that. It felt like it just kind of went away from me. It happened so fast. Oh. Oh. So I don't know if I would blame uh, rake angle or front end stability on that crash either. Again, kind of just something that happens. Um, but I would love to see Triumph uh, eventually sometime make a Tiger 900 or whatever one is coming out next with a more adventure bike kind of uh, rake angle frame geometry and an 18 inch rear tire. Those are the two big kind of things that I would want this bike to have. Uh, speaking of which, with the new motor, you're actually able to get the suspension to get itself out of, out of trouble a little bit more. Uh, or, you know, break the rear end telepathically almost. You kind of think about breaking it loose and no longer do you have to really crank on it. It'll, you can ease into that and really hold 
uh, a throttle position and a slide really well. So the bike slides really well. Um, you're able to get over some dips or over some rocks a little bit easier because of that extra power from the bike. And the suspension uh, feels more complemented from the motor than uh, the previous generation. So it's really this knockout kind of total package. If you have a 21 Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro, I highly suggest you just get some suspension for it, uh, upgrade that or take care of this seat if you want it to be more comfortable. Uh, anything like that, don't run out and buy a new one, um, even though this new one is really good. Uh, if you feel compelled to go out and buy a new one, I can't blame you. It is that good. I would highly suggest test riding one if you're on the fence about, uh, say, a 23 versus a 24. Um, because I think you'd have some buyer's remorse if you bought a 2023 right now uh, with the 24s coming out soon. Um, because the motor is just that good and the whole package of the bike just seems to be top tier, you know, 1000cc plus kind of level bike that has all the bells and whistles. That's what Triumph has delivered with this Rally Pro and I'm glad that they're not even offering the base model rallies anymore um, because I like my heated seats, I like my heated grips. Turn off the traction control is awesome, turn off the ABS is awesome, having a off-road pro mode is really cool. So you still get the uh, six rider modes, one is a user mode. Um, rode around on this bike in sport mode for a little bit with that really aggressive uh, throttle map and you can kind of feel the rear end step it out a little bit uh, if you're on some more dusty uh, asphalt roads and, and it makes for a really lively kind of ride, super smooth in that slipper assist clutch. Uh, with the auto blipper up and down for the, the shift assist. Really fantastic, like makes the bike just seem really far ahead from where that original Triumph Tiger 800 triple was uh, just a few years ago, 2012, I think it was 11 was the first year of the Tiger 800s. Here we are with this model and it's, it's leaps and bounds better. Uh, and it's a major upgrade to the Triumph lineup, which is really great to see. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, uh, leave a comment below and we'll get back to you. Or check out the article for a more in-depth review of this bike on ADVPulse.com. Thanks, guys. I'm tired. Uh, I, forgot to, um, I forgot to go into the competition and uh, whether you should uh, buy one of these or not. Um, so, competition for this bike, you're looking at the Ducati Desert X. Uh, 950cc V-twin bikes. I really, I've ridden the Desert X, really liked it, but uh, those V-twin Ducatis, they make a lot of grunt down low. They're they're pretty smooth, but they're not as smooth as this. It's not as slick, and with this new motor, uh, man, it makes that gap really, really tight. I would say that the big takeaway for the Desert X is that it, it leaves the ground a little bit easier. You know, I jumped those quite a bit when we were testing those in Aspen, and um, really a great motor that it's just kind of a character thing between these two bikes. Do you want a Ducati or a Triumph? Me personally, the, the uh, Triumph Tiger Rally Pro here uh, is going to be a more go-to answer for a lot of people for me because it's just such a well-rounded adventure bike um, and it feels really comfortable. The KTM uh, 890 and 790s, uh, great bikes, super stable, very aggressive. There's a huge aftermarket for them. They lack the refinement that the 900 Rally Pro has. Uh, again, I'm a big fan of the triple. I'm not a fan of parallel twins. You know, they just don't have that character that this bike has. Price point wise, you're gonna pay a little bit more for the Tiger Rally Pro. You get a couple extra features and you get an extra cylinder. And uh, it's just a much more, again, well-rounded adventure bike where the KTM leans to be a much more aggressive off-road machine. So when you're kind of looking at these bikes, Think about what you want it to be and how you want it to feel. Don't just go for something because, you know, somebody says this is going to be the best thing for this. Um, what ends up being a really good bike is the one that you're always kind of out on, the one that you really enjoy, one that's super smooth, super reliable. Again, Triumph's reliability has been flat out the best for me. I've never had an issue where I couldn't get a bike back home or out of the trail or out of the woods uh, or out of the desert or Canada or wherever else I've taken my Triumph Tigers uh, in the past. And uh, that's just a testament to them. They're, they're built like a tank and they, they have a lot of class and refinement. Uh, if you get into that Honda Africa Twin, the 1100, uh, huge bike, really big, really big tank, a lot of controls, uh, lacks a lot of refinement compared to this. And again, it's a parallel twin, which is not my favorite engine configuration. 
Other competition is going to be the 21 to 23 Tiger Rally Pros. Uh, if you own one, like I said, get a suspension upgrade or, you know, maybe get some touring parts or some new saddlebags and you might feel okay. If you ride one of these new 24 Tri Triumph Tigers, it, you're going to be like, wow, I really feel like I need one. Um, so I'd try to not do that if I were you. If you guys got any other competition questions, like, you know, the T7, the price points are just so far apart. The Honda Trans Alp, you know, you'd almost buy two Trans Alps before you buy one of these, but they're not even close to the same bike. So, you know, that's going to be more of a price point and quality and features thing uh, than anything where this Triumph is just all class leading stuff. And, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be my big takeaway for this bike, guys. And I uh, hope you appreciate it. Like I said, if you have any questions or comments, Leave them below, I'll get back to you. Check out the article, which is going to be linked below. Uh, there's a good comment section there where I get back to everybody as well. And I'll uh, see you guys out there. Whew, I'm tired. It's just something that's unfortunate. Oh, uh, God damn it. I almost had that one. It's so hot. Now it's because they put the shooting, okay? So the plan is... <laughs> hey, put that thing away! Oh, that was fun. <laughs> so much pressure. <laughs> oh, you don't like being cold, do you? God damn, that is tricky. Got it. A little pucker factor on that one. Good. Oh. <laughs> Stop it. Get off of my bike. Good one. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. <sighs> kind of hamper. Oh, no, I'm good. You're good? Yeah, 100%. So We're just uh, taking a break. Yeah. Uh. Where's it hurt? There? Nowhere. Oh, it looked like you landed right on your hip. Or oh, I, I probably did. Well, that's not good. Oh, that's the problem. Holy shit, man. I was going to pass you as you were falling. I the body went this way. I threw out the cat. I threw out the cat claw so I could slow yeah, myself you down. The body went this way. Oh. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. 100. Come on. I don't know. I think I was in the middle. This could be a bit blind done. Plus, I think I was in the middle, and it just went shh, right away. Yeah, you were on that. You were on the crown. Yeah. The fire. I just watched you go. Yep. Yeah. I came across over there. Run over the Oh. Yeah, because then I would have took out two bikes. Yeah, I was close. That would have been expensive. There was one point. You were about here. Yeah. Like, oh. oh my god. Your foot came over the top of this. Oh yeah. Man, I have I, I don't think I was running any front brake or anything. That's it feels good. This part is slick. It is to stop. all the way out there. Yeah. To where where did you stop? Here? No, I stopped right there. Oh. Where my bike has where I stopped. Oh my gosh. I, I was like Oh yeah, you were right up on like I'm gonna run him over. <laughs> Kinda wish you did. I don't. I know. I know you don't want to, but I am embarrassed. These things happen. Well, like I said, I would have done it on my own bike too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah. Fun. Uh, typical Harley rider slowing up the pace. Oh boy.